people say, we, didn't, we don't gas Jews. You know, that, that's the thing they always say. We're not Nazis, we don't gas Jews, but we do a lot of what the Nazis used to do. So I want you to imagine now that it's midnight and you're in your own home in Los Angeles. It's dark. You're in bed. Your family are asleep in the, in the other rooms, okay? So it's nice and dark, it's nice and quiet. Everything's peaceful. And whilst you're asleep, 25 armed men, uh, we've got shotguns, assault rifles, grenades, explosives. We're creeping up to your house. You don't even know we're there. We're creeping up the side of your house and we're creeping up to your front door and we're putting a huge amount of explosives on your front door. You're still asleep. The first thing you know about us coming in is bang. The explosives go off on your front door. There's dust everywhere. Your ears are ringing. It's still dark. And before you can realize what's going on, you know, it's like the biggest firework you've ever heard has just gone off in your house. You can hear men in your house, downstairs. You can hear these men, they're coming in. They're coming up the stairs. You can hear them in the rooms downstairs. Heavy footsteps coming up the stairs, kicking your door in. Maybe they're throwing a, a minor explosive in on the way in. They've got you. They're dragging you out of your bed. All the males, you're being dragged downstairs into one room. Females into another room. Children into another room. You're all being held at gunpoint. The males are taken into a room and brutally interrogated. Slapped around, punched around, shouted at in a foreign language they can't understand. The women and children are held at gunpoint in another room. And my job at this point was to go around your house with a big sack, like a mail sack, and take everything out of your house of any use. Bank statements, passports, mobile phones, money, any weapons you might have. And before you're thinking, oh, weapons, they must have been terrorists. Everyone in Iraq at that time had a rifle in the house. It was one of the most dangerous places on earth. There were kidnaps and ransoms going on all the time. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was a common thing for people to have rifles in their houses. So whilst we're interrogating the males, and we're talking about anyone between the ages of 16 and 65, your house is getting trashed. And we're not carefully going through your house, everything's being ripped apart. All the, all the cupboards are getting ripped open, all the drawers, everything's getting trashed. People are crying now. Now we're filling all this stuff up, putting all the stuff in the bags. And maybe you dare to have a glimpse out of the room you're being held in. After 20 minutes, we've got everything that's in your house into these three bags. And your dad or your brother or your husband or whoever it is, he's in the hallway. We've put a black sack over his head. We put some earphones on his ears and we've tied his hands up with plastic cable ties. And we're dragging him out through the hole where your front door used to be. This has lasted about 20 minutes. And this is the job that we were doing again and again, night after night, going into people's houses, doing this job. Sometimes we'd go into a first house and the guy who was leading it all would say, we've got the wrong house, it's next door. And we'd stack up again and do the same, same job again. Again and again. Most of the time, the people we took back with us were not the people we were looking for. We'd have a name and a photograph on our arms. We're after this person here, Mr. Smith. But this guy's Mr. Davis. Doesn't matter, he's in this address. This is a known address he's coming to.